Alrighty, Yoimiya, Amber's worst nightmare. She's the one with an arrow who swiftly jumps up like a sparrow, but her chances of gaining my trust seems to be narrow since she's basically boiling Amber's bone marrow by being featured on her birthday. Nice, Mihoyo. Anyways, before we start the video, I just want to mention that only a small percentage of you guys are actually subscribed to my channel, so if you watch my videos often, consider leaving a like and subscribe because it's free and you can always change your mind. Damn it, fucking shoot the- sh shoot the- sh shoot the girl- shoot the- Alright, so story time. So Yoimiya makes fireworks. Oh, and she's friends with Utao, which is kind of ironic. What? I'm fucking friendship too? I can't fucking unlock this shit. I'm too lazy. Starting with her elemental abilities, elemental skill totally not Hu Tao's E. Yoimiya's auto attacks now deal pyro damage, and her normal attack damage is increased by a significant amount as well. Also, during this ability, Yoimiya won't be able to initiate her quad charge attack arrows that no one uses, so I guess keep that in mind. Elemental burst, totally not Riptide. Yoimiya jumps into the air, then shoots her fireworks downwards, then applies the Riptide effect to the enemy. But the only way for you to spread it amongst these lab rats is to hit them with anyone else other than Yoimiya. <laughs> or just use Xingqiu or Beidou, I don't know. Ah yes, Yoimi has such unique design and such unique abilities. I can't think of any other character that can do what she can do. Oh. Moving on to passive talents, passive 1, pew pew pew, the more you shoot and hit, your damage stacks up to 20%. Passive 2, boom boom boom, when Yoimiya ults, she raises her team's attack by 10% for 15 seconds, except for herself. The attack buff can also be increased further by 1% every pew 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 stacks. Passive 3, when you craft furnishings in your teapot, Yoimiya will refund a portion of your materials, guaranteed. I mean, jokes aside though, who doesn't love Yoimiya's design? You know, her patterns on the clothing are nice, her shoes are cool, you know, her firework theme is nice too, the big ribbon, her hair, the accessories on her hair, everything about her is very unique. There's really no other reason why people like Yoimiya. <coughs> God, sorry. I had to take a lot of copium today making this video. Constellation 1, damage buff. Constellation 2, damage buff. Constellation 3, damage buff. Constellation 4, not a damage buff. Constellation 5, damage buff. Constellation 6, big damage buff. What? Moving on to artifacts, so Yoimiya is a damage dealer, apparently. So you want damage dealing artifacts, attack percentage for sands, power damage bonus for goblets, and then crit rate or crit damage for circlets, whichever one you need more. For substats, definitely try to focus on crit damage and crit rate. Power resonance will boost your attack, so don't worry about it too much. Personally, I do think crit rate is more valuable for a character like Yoimiya who relies on constant damage, so you probably want to crit as consistently as possible. I do think even with low crit damage, if you have the right weapon or the right piece set, crit damage may be the least of your concerns. Ooh, Yoimiya's charge attack. Very pretty. Aw, oh, shit. Come on, Yoimiya. What the fuck? Moving on to piece sets. For beginners, two-piece berserker and two-piece martial arts is a fine choice. Four-piece martial arts may be great as well if you have enough crit rate, but it's beginners and I doubt it. For endgame, I do think two-piece gladiator, reminiscence, and two-piece witch is workable, but for a character that rely on auto attack damage, I do think the four-piece reminiscence set is the best piece set for Yoimiya, mainly because I think the 50% auto attack and charge attack bonus is incredibly valuable for Yoimiya's consistent damage. So even if you have the worst substats in the world, consider using the four-piece set on Yoimiya because because you'll notice the significant difference in damage compared to the two-piece clad and the two-piece witch. Oh, there's also the four-piece bolite set, but since this is restrictive to shields, I would make sure your shield unit has a sturdy shield. In my case, I don't have a feather or an hourglass, so I'm stuck with the two-piece two-piece build. For weapons, starting with five stars, thundering. This is technically the best choice for Yoimiya. It's like a rust on crack five star stats, you know, Staff of Homa bow version, but I'm not pulling for it because I'm saving and I'm not using child. Amos bow, it actually does work. People think that Amos bow is only for charge attacks, but that's not really the case. It still benefit auto attackers like Yoimiya and it provides high attack for letting you only care about crit rate or crit damage for your artifacts. Still though, since you can't really maximize Yoimiya's damage with the ability of this weapon, Weapon. Scoured Harp. This does make your stats look nice. It's an amazing choice for Yoimiya. If you are using this, I would highly recommend you to use the 4-piece Reminiscent or the 4-piece Bolide, as you'll see the significant damage difference from the 2-piece Witch and the 2-piece Clad. Starting with 4 stars, Black Cliff. Pretty great weapon for Yoimiya. High base attack stat, decent crit damage, ability is decent for Yoimiya as well. Credit card. Not a necessity. Crit rate will help, but ability-wise, there are better replacements, and also, it takes your credit card. Uh, Royal. Timmy of all weapons. 
weapons. God, I hate this weapon. Don't think it's necessary, but the ability can work with Yoimiya pretty well since each hit is stacking crit rate, but I think it's much better with higher refinement rank. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is actually kind of better than Black Cliff in a way. Rust. Personally, I think this is the best four star weapon for Yoimiya, especially if you have its refinement rank up. This weapon does decrease your charge attack damage by like 10%, but not really a big deal. The amount of normal attack boost is pretty much worth it, like 80%. That's insane. Sacrificial, not necessary. Stringless, not necessary. Favonius, not necessary. Waltz, no. Alley Hunter, no. Windbloom, no. Free to play weapons. Compound, only for physical. Prototype, might be fairly decent after you headshot, but some things don't have one. Hamayumi, I think this is the better choice for free to plays, even with the four piece reminiscent. It's not that difficult to recharge energy after you press E, anyways, so I would highly recommend it for free to plays. Alright, so story time. So in Inazuma, fireworks symbolize summer, and festivals also symbolize summer. Actually, I don't know about that part. I didn't really read through this, I didn't really care. But, anyways, Ayaka hired Yoimiya to make a Raiden Shogun Buba sword symbol on the sky so that because Raiden Shogun is looking and Ayaka wanted to fucking appreciate her or something so uh Yoimiya made that and uh he liked it for teams, I personally found this to be kind of difficult because aside from damage when I played Yoimiya, I felt slightly vulnerable. But for teams, from my experience, using Animal units to boost Yoimiya's damage is great. However, thanks to Mihoyo focusing on Electro, Animal Infusion keeps using with Electro, which effectively ruins my team comp. But there's one unit that ignores all that bullshit and dumps a bunch of water, no matter what element is infused. Xing Cho, of course, is the best vaporized team initiator and he does his job perfectly with no mistake. So personally, I highly recommend this water boy since he works pretty well with your burst as well if you're using that. Other Hydro Applicators like Mona, Barbara, and Child exist as well, but Mona and Barbara feels a little slow, and Child is a little too fast, and isn't passively applying Hydro, so no. What about Melt? Melt is good, except that Chi Chi and Kaya's Q doesn't shoot out in a 5 meter range and scream Emerald Splash. Rosaria and Dionis is kinda slow in terms of constant cry application with their burst. Chung Yun and Eula? <laughs> of course, Ganyu exists as well. I tried it. It works pretty nice. If you for some reason don't like committing genocide with a goat, then sure, yeah, show them mercy for hitting your best girl. Then we have Shinobu. It technically works. Bring an animal unit though, so you can hit them all together, but you also might need a cryo battery for Shinobu, so like pick one, I guess. So now we come with a final reaction. Overload. I like Overload. It's pretty good. I find it annoying to keep up with whoever is ending the reaction, but Beidou and Fischl already does big damage with their burst, so like try her out even if your elemental mastery is low. For Animo, Kazuha definitely was 100% worth the pull. He works great. Venti's great too. Sucrose, I guess, but her CC isn't that effective compared to Venti and Kazuha. And Sayu is not really for CC, but if you don't have Bennett and need a healer, I guess she's fine, but wouldn't be my first choice in Yoimiya teams. Now for Geo, since Yoimiya is incredibly vulnerable, uh, Zhongli. Ding Guang only if it's a burst support, and then Albedo, it's alright for her burst, I guess, but then we have Waterboy, so we don't really need him. Noel, if you don't have a healer and a Zhongli, then that is your best bet. Finally, for Power Resonance, Bennett is your best choice. Also, a pretty great battery. Shangling can also work as well, especially Especially when you don't have a Bennett, she can act as a Pyroshing Cho, so your Riptide keeps popping. So how the f do you play Yoimiya? Well, uh, pretend you're playing Hu Tao. Oh, you need more. Okay, number one, Yoimiya is a very vulnerable character. You can't activate shit while you're attacking, even if you press them, which I think is fucking bullshit. And her cooldown for her E is also incredibly long. So make sure to rotate all of your character's abilities before you go ahead and pew pew enemies. Then make sure to rotate as soon as you hit the eight second mark on the cooldown, because that's when your pew pew ends. Number two, since Yoimiya is vulnerable, you can really just save Yoimiya's burst as an oh shit button to stay invincible when a giant lava troll jumps at you with no warning. Oh, Though, practice dodging with Yoimiya, because if you have a 4 piece reminiscence set, maintaining your energy to a certain degree is important. Which leads to number 3. This is probably why I don't like auto attack archers. Yoimiya's main damage should be coming from her auto attacks, which are single target. If you're against a horde of enemies that are about to do something very unpleasant to Yoimiya, your only choice for AoE damage is her burst. So here's what you do. If you're using the reminiscence set, use your E first and then by the time her E duration is over, you probably have enough energy to use her burst. So do that and rotate to other characters, use their abilities and then rinse and repeat. Personally, I think she's alright, but I think the main issue to Yoimiya is that her damage is underwhelming for a single target DPS. So using passive attackers like Xing Cho and Beidou is an important factor for Yoimiya teams in order to maintain consistent damage output, but since a lot of teams rely on Xing Cho's abilities, I just hope someone like Xing Cho shows up in the future, but that is pretty much it for this video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, we also have a Discord link below, so join in if you want. Other than that though, hope you guys have an amazing day, Bye bye